Hi guys, welcome back on the channel. In today's Creating Miniature Armies video, we're going to talk about the Caroline War 1369-1389. This was the second phase of the Hundred Years' War. It is a period that we're not very familiar as the English media of the time hushed it as it was a total domination for the French. The French won all the lands that Edward III and the Black Prince conquered, uh, except as a, a small part of Gascony uh, remaining for the English, and uh, um, obviously Calais. The English um, remembered the war uh, after uh, the appearance of Henry V, and of course the total English domination of the period. So let's go and see uh, the context of the war. This is a very interesting video. There's not much you learn about playing um, uh, with miniatures uh, than you learned from the other two uh, phases that I uploaded, but it's a very interesting period because there are many armies you can use, and it's um, very interesting to see how the French won back all their lands. The Caroline War was the second phase of the Hundred Years' War between France and England following the Edwardian War. It was so named after Charles V of France, who resumed the war nine years after the Treaty of Brittany, signed in 1360. The Kingdom of France dominated this phase of the war. It was a total domination for the French, and um, Charles V was basically the Dauphin who fought uh, with his father John II in the Battle of Poitiers. An unexperienced soldier, but obviously a great king. Now, what was the context? Why the French rejuvenated the war and why they managed to win back all these lands? The Black Prince, eldest son and heir of Edward III of England, spent a huge sum of money in order to restore Peter the Crew to the throne of Castile. The Castilian king was unable to repay him, however, so the Black Prince raised taxes in his domains in Aquitaine. The people's complaints were unheeded, so they appealed to the French king Charles V. In May 1369, the Black Prince received summons from the French king demanding his presence in Paris. The prince refused, and Charles responded by declaring war. He immediately set out to reverse the territorial losses imposed at Brittany, and he was largely successful in his lifetime. His successor, Charles VI, made peace with the son of the Black Prince, Richard II, in 1389. This truce extended many times until the war was resumed in 1415. So it was basically a proxy war that um, resulted in this um, start of the second part of the Hundred Years' War. So let's talk about some battles. In this period now, the French did not fight the English in pitched battles. With the great commander, uh, Bertrand de Guclin, uh, that's how he's pronounced. I checked some French YouTubers' videos about him, and that's how he pronounced them. It's a very difficult name, if you see the spelling. Um, so Bertrand de Gaclan was Constable of France, a great commander, and he never fought an actual pitched battle with the English. He fought a guerrilla warfare, sieges, chevaches. He fought the English with their own uh, medicine. So uh, he won one by one castles and territories. So we have the Battle of Montier. The Battle of Montier uh, was fought on the 14th of March 1369 uh, between Franco-Castilian forces supporting Henry of Trasmara and Grenadian Castilian forces supporting um, the reigning Peter of Castile. So again, proxy wars, I was saying. Then in 1370, we have the Siege of Limoges. Uh, the town of Limoges was under English control. But in August 1370, it surrendered to the French and opened the gates of Duke of Berry. Uh, then the English sieged Limoges with Edward the Prince and his brothers. It was uh, um, the Legion of Gaunt. And um, the English took it by storm, killing and destroying the city and killing numerous civilians. The sack effectively ended Limoges' enamel industry, which had been famous across Europe for around a century. Then, 1370, the Battle of pont -Valen. The Battle of pont -Valen, part of the Hundred Years' War, took place in the Chartres region in the northwest France on the 4th of December, 1370, where the French army under Bertrand de Guerclin heavily defeated the English force, which has broken away from an army commanded by Sir Robert Knowles. You will see a bit later that a very important part of winning a period, let's say an era, were the commanders, and the English didn't have good commanders at that time. 
most of the famous commanders, Sir Reginald Cobham, Sir John Chandos, uh, John De Vere, Northampton, were all dead uh, from the first part or elderly, and uh, the English had very few good commanders. The French, on the other hand, had Bertrand uh, de Gaclan, who was a brilliant commander. So you see how important it is for commanders. You will see the same in the first part of the Hundred Years' War. And the latter part, where the English had great commanders dominating and then the French again um, starting uh, taking the advantage. So you have the famous Battle of La, La Rochelle, 1372. The Battle of La Rochelle was a naval battle fought on the 22nd and 23rd of June between a Castilian fleet commanded by Castilian Admiral Ambrosio Bacaregra and an English fleet commanded by John Hastings, 2nd Earl of Pembroke. Obviously, the English fleet was destroyed. Then you have the Battle of Chissé. Again, small battles between English and French forces during the Hundred Years' War. The French laid siege again with commanded by Bertrand de Guclin and um, they uh, met the relief force and defeated it, so they, they, they won the siege. That's how the French fought. Uh, the Battle of Rosbeck, I'm not going to go to every single battle. There is a French Burgundy, Brittany, Norman army defeats Flemish army. The Siege of Ypres, again another siege uh, that was won by the French. 1385, the English invasion of Scotland. Uh, July, Jean de Vienne, having successfully strengthened the French naval situation, lands an army in Scotland but is forced to retreat. The Battle of Ajaborata, and this is a Franco-Castilian battle. Uh, where um, the Portuguese, strengthened by English longbowmen, uh, lost uh, um, the battle. And then you have another battle, the Battle of Margarita. English fleet defeats Franco-Castilian Flemish fleet, ending the threat of French invasion in England. Now let's see the participating armies, but this is very difficult, very interesting, because you can have many armies now in this part of the Hundred Years' War. Now obviously you have the English in the center, and then... You have, on the top right here, you have Ghent rebels. Here you have the Gascons, the Castilians, and here obviously uh, on the bottom right, you have the Duchy of Aquitaine. So a lot of choices here. It's very interesting how many choices you have for armies. And obviously this period accommodates skirmish rules. You know, there were not some major battles. So you could play smaller battles, let's say, not skirmish as such, but smaller battles. Let's see the French. Again, the French have had the Burgundians, had the Britons, had the Flemish and the Castilians. Again, so you see here you can use, we have five armies here and five armies with the English. You have ten choices of creating some very interesting armies. Now let's see miniatures. Miniatures, again, you can have to use Claymore, the earlier part of the Hundred Years' War. Um, shields, obviously, you will have for lesser troops. You see here in the back uh, how the high... Uh, ranking troops had almost plate armor everywhere, but you need to have uh, chain mail and some uh, coat of arms outside. Here, uh, again, on the right, you see um, a, a heavy infantry, or it could be um, a lesser troop. Here again, you see on the right here how the plate armor works and the helms. Always, always, there has to be a chain mail. You cannot use peri miniatures here. And again, this could be heavy infantry with shields, a different kind of helms, and uh, cumbersomes and extra padding. Again, here the mounted knights, they used to have shields, uh, pressure plate armor, so plate everywhere, but in look in, in positions like this around the neck and everywhere where you, have, you, you need to have uh, chain mail, and here this is um, a lesser knight with pressure plate armor here, come, some cloths here, uh, heavy padding here. You see, whatever they can find, they put plate and... Um, whatever they could use so this is this is um, this um uh, claim of miniatures are perfect for the era as well again here and other more miniatures you see high uh, ranking knights here with all almost full plate armor but always you see parts of um chain mail and this um shoulder plates here more heavy infantry with their plate armor and here again infantry with no plate at all we have you know basically cloth so again, a lot of variety, a lot of variety this in this period as well. Again, here you see here on the right, uh, higher ranking knights with their armor, chainmail obviously, uh, so their shields, the weapons. And here on the right, on the left, you have uh, lesser troops, but here in the corners, again, higher ranking knights. You see, although they have a lot of plate almost everywhere, there are some locations they don't have, and that what makes them different than them. Uh, for example, um, 
pair of miniatures we saw uh, in the last video. Mounted knights, we saw them before in the Edwardian War, uh, plate armor, but a lot of chainmail, not too much, um, not plate on the horses, mostly bodied, uh, but not plate. Let's talk about notable commanders now. Now, the problem was with notable commanders is that the English had none. Um, first of all, we had the hero of the Rabbitran, de Gaclan, here on the left, where he was, well, the, 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 he was dominating the era. He won back everything for France. You had Edward the Black Prince who died before the era finished. He was uh, in bad health, uh, invalided back to Gascony. He didn't play a very important role. And you have Charles V of France, who was a Dauphin, basically, and who obviously was a great general and uh, with Bertrand de Guclan managed to win all uh, of France's um, losses from the Dwarden Wars. Again, you have Edward III, uh, who was quite old, and he died before the end of the era, and Jean de Grely, Capital de Bouche, who was one of the major commanders of the Dwarden War, a great hero of the Battle of Poitiers, uh, who remained, he remained fighting and true to the Black Prince. But you don't see any major commanders anymore for the English. You see, for example, the English have Robert Knowles, Okay, they have Richard II of England who uh, took over, uh, John of Gaunt. Again, not the commanders and, and the warriors they used to have. Um, the French had Oliver uh, de Glisson, Jean de Vienne, Philip the Bold, and Ambrosio Bocanegra, who we talk about, the Castilian um, captain. You see, though, that only uh, the presence of one uh, huge commander, uh, Bertrand de Clan, uh, huge influence and great strategies, how the war changed totally. So how you can fight this war? Um, obviously, French are stronger in command now. Uh, they fight the English as guerrilla warfare, they, they do chevaches, they fight with smaller armies, they do sieges, they do ambushes, they avoid pitched battles. Um, and um, it seems to be working as they won everything back. Uh, but you have so many choices of armies, so many choices of conflict. You have the Briton, Briton succession, you can you can fight battles there. You have the Castilian and the Portuguese war. You have so many uh, armies, as I showed you before, that you can use. And obviously many interesting commanders that they're not as famous as the ones we had in the Dwardian Wars or in the uh, Lancastrian Wars. Uh, but anyway, guys, uh, this is from me. I hope you enjoyed this short video. I just There's not too much extra to give in the Caroline War, but I can give you the context and a period of the war that is not famous, how you can fight it, what types of battles you can fight, and obviously the miniatures you can use. Thank you so much for watching and bye-bye.